So, Nicolas, it looks like we are live. Let me just check this out over here. And then we're going to start. Oh, it looks like it's working. Perfect. So, before we're going to start, guys, um, I will do a little bit of exercise over here and I will make a final reminder. I will send a final reminder to everyone who has registered for um, the challenge so they can join uh, in the last moment. So, Nicolas, if you can overtake for a few seconds the the live stream <laughs> and sure. I will do my job and then you can and then we're going to switch. OK, super. Thanks for everyone for joining the first day of the revenue challenge. Uh, me and Radka had this idea almost a month back and we work really hard for um, you to be uh, able to be part of it. Um, in this challenge, uh, we will guide you through the dynamic uh, supplement. And uh, following uh, the end of uh, session number one, we will be sending you um, a very simple, actually, tool uh, that you can use so that you can calculate on your own, like how much money you are leaving on your table by uh, not having applied, by not applying yet dynamic uh, supplements. So it's going to be really exciting, uh, especially for revenue people, commercial, and of course, owners, because who doesn't want to know how much more money they can earn? And uh, as soon as Radka is ready, we are ready to kick in with her part. It will be 15 minutes, and then another 15 minutes on me. We want this to be really short and you know, very, very practical. In the very end, we'll give you the exercise. You'll have time till tomorrow morning to complete it. The exercise is for you. You don't need to send it back to us. But of course, we will be happy to discuss it tomorrow with you. And we will also have a super cool case study. Perfect. So I'm ready. The email was sent. So I'm really happy. Thank you very much. There are the last few comers to the group. So let me just allow them to enter because there were so many registrations, guys. And then, um, and there are just not everyone is watching live. So let me just find my slides and we're gonna start. So actually, thank you very much, Nicolas. Thank you everyone for being here right now, watching live. I already see few eyes. So guys, it would be perfect uh, that you gonna comment under the video who you are, where are you coming from, what is the hotel. So anything, just just make uh, you know the comment under the video. If you are looking, if you are watching um, as a from the replay, you can do the hashtag replay so we actually see that you have been here, you have been seen, you have seen it, and uh, yeah, because it gives us the the more the um, the group is going to be live. And with more comments, the better it's going to be for you and also for the rest of the group. So I will also open right now um, my mobile. If there'll be any comments, then I can reply or we can um, you know, answer the question. So any questions which you may have during the live stream, guys, please in the comments under this video, um, introduce yourself. If you are on a replay, hashtag replay. And who will be the host for today, Radka, Nikolaus. Thank you, Nikolaus, for being uh, here with me. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to use your tool, because without your tool, it's going to be only blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I'm really happy that we're going to exercise it together. And then we're going to together discover more about the dynamic pricing. Um, I've been sharing a few videos in the beginning of, uh, I mean, yesterday already about me. So when it comes to intention, uh, why we have decided to create this, um, this challenge is to really, you know, change your current pricing strategy, which can give you more room revenue, which you can leverage, uh, especially in a high demanded period to get a little bit more revenue when it comes to really make sure that, that the opportunity is not being missed. And on the top, there is going to have a really big influence on your demand also in a low season. I'm going to talk about it most likely tomorrow. So 
Uh, first of all, what I would like to say, I'm the pure revenue manager, data-driven manager, but in the last three years, I have started to be more, or uh, putting attention more into the mindset of revenue management. So not only looking at the data, but also looking, um, you know, taking care of what's happening in our mind when we are setting up the price. The pricing is just a tech. So it means um, the price we are actually putting out publicly, it's only the perception how we feel about how we feel about what is the, let's say the price point for our customer acceptable, let's call it this way. But the customer is the one who is purchasing the room, who is buying or booking the room. And it reflects, this price reflects their value and their the, the money they are allowed or they are allowed to spend for accommodation. So it's not yours. So they are the one who are saying, hey, this is really what I would like to get. This is what I'm going to book. And because of um, your pricing strategy, if you are going to use the dynamic pricing strategy, then you will be able to attract more customers only just playing with the pricing and you know adjusting the price when it comes to the timing, you know how many days prior to arrival um, the bookings are coming and stuff like that. So your pricing should be set based on demand. And um, it is really showing how you value your business. So if you are thinking like you are not able to sell your room for 100 euro, 150 euro, in your mind, there is really like a huge activation of this, we are not able to do it. And you know, the energy and everything behind it, not from the revenue management perspective or from the mind perspective is that you are blocking that energy of allowing yourself to really you know, enjoy this momentum where the reservations are coming in. So the client's books and it's emotional decision. It's not for the client. It is not the, this kind of overthinking decision of what kind of price we're going to set. He is making emotional decision and we are making this kind of very, uh, you know, data driven decision about the pricing. So we need to also sometimes to see our potential from the mindset perspective and seeing that we are really able to get that money which we are looking for, not only just taking care of the price when it comes to the competition. So we definitely, if we would like to get more, uh, more revenue in from the rooms, then we really need to switch definitely from fixed pricing into the dynamic pricing. So it means that every single price point, every single price, 100 euro, 110, 120, 130, is bringing you further, is bringing you to your aim, to really um, generate more revenue. Yesterday, when I was preparing the uh, presentation for you, I have realized one thing, like I would like to showcase you what are the price, um, the pricing strategies, which I have experienced over almost like, I'm sorry to say like 20 years doing the revenue management. <laughs> and this is what I have just come up to the Maslow hotel pricing revenue uh, or the strategies. So at the bottom, this is something what I have experienced before 1999, when I, before I started really do the revenue management and um, a little bit flexible pricing. So it's the recreate pricing or the pricing in a season. So it, it means we have a low season, high season, and we have some kind of weekends. This is this kind of fixed pricing. Years after I have experienced and starting to apply the dynamic pricing, the flexible pricing based on bar levels. So it means based on occupancy, we are having certain levels and we are changing the price as the occupancy is simply changing. And the same applies on room type supplement. So we have a room, standard room, and we have a superior room and there's a difference 20 euro always. No matter what is the season, no matter what is the demand, no matter what is the availability on that, uh, of that particular upgraded room. Later on, we come up with dynamic pricing based on a demand. So we, we skip the seasonality, low season, high season, and we started to look at the demand and look uh, and seeing it as a, as a very flexible, it's as a flowing. So it means in a high season, you can have a low demand. And even in a low demand, you can have a 
uh, in the low season, you can have a high demand. So, I mean, we have to really start to applying the pricing according to a demand, according to what is, how does, the, how does it look um, with our availability and what's happening also with business on the books on the revenue side. Then we have really upgraded a lot with open bar pricing or open pricing. It means we have skipped this kind of best available rate levels and we have moved to the open pricing. So it means we are not being limited or what kind of price we are going to set for our, for our room. And we still, we have been also still using the fixed pricing on a supplement. Right now we are, let's say, I would say in the highest level and it is like open pricing on demand using the dynamic room type supplement. Um, maybe you can, uh, Nicolaus, say something like, do you, uh, uh, from my perspective, I believe this is the highest level at this moment when it comes to the revenue management and the pricing strategies. How do you see, how do you feel about that? You know, are we really at this moment on the top of that pyramid or not yet when it comes to the pricing? I would say that it's literally the smallest percentage of hotels out there that at the uh, number one or even uh, number two. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult using uh, legacy PMSs to be at actually any of this level, even including three. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's much easier with an RMS uh, if you're using a legacy PMS. However, with uh, having cloud-based PMSs and channel managers, it's possible to be on number level one and level two, even without losing uh, an RMS. But what we observe with uh, all the inside just by observing the market and as we will speak later we have more than 55,000 clients I would definitely say that it's the smallest majority of them that are on level one and even level number two thank you so I really feel like Maslow pyramid is hierarchy is it's really represent quite um, uh, you know it the picture of how the pricing strategies among the hotel industry within our hotels is it really shows like where are also the percentage of the hoteliers using the dynamic pricing bar pricing or eventually the seasonal pricing i have experience especially in independent properties that there are still hotels small even big one they are still using the rec rates and still using the seasonal pricing so for you guys if you are at this moment on a live stream and you are watching us and if you are in that level five and you have not moved yet to the next level it's really for you before you're going to start applying the dynamic room type supplement you need to start implementing your bar pricing eventually open pricing in your property very carefully because there is no experience for you to using the open bar pricing so it may be really tricky um, for you to implement it whoever is using right now the open pricing, for you, the step to move into the room type, dynamic room type supplement is going to be very easy because you have been having enough experience to really just, you know, implement this dynamic pricing on a room type, um, on a room type. So, so if you would like to, um, let's say we are at this moment, this, uh, this workshop or this training or this challenge is that we are somewhere around level four, let's say. We have the open pricing or eventually bar pricing, and we would like to, uh, um, we would like to generate more revenue. We can definitely do it by um, using the dynamic room type pricing without any dynamic pricing, this kind of being able to adjust the supplement surcharge, it can be really tricky for someone who has not been uh, still or has not been um, with the dynamic pricing yet. So this is really a powerful, um, let's say, pricing strategy. It can be used immediately. So it means if you just do your exercise after today's session, you can start implementing it and you can definitely see the results immediately. And it is, is going to have a huge impact, especially if you have at this moment, if you are at this moment in a high demanded period and you have only few rooms left, okay? So there's, you can really start to utilizing or le leveraging the last uh, inventory and making sure that you are, you know, benefiting out of that. And, and you are also hitting the right customer. 
this is also very important because through the price tag, you are simply attracting a different type of the customer because who is willing to pay 100 euro has a different expectations and uh, then someone who is paying 200 euro. And this is really, it's going to have the long run or long term, uh, you know, revenue potential for your hotel, especially if you start to think like, who is my customer who is paying 100 euro and who is the customer paying 200 euro and how I can make them both happy and, you know, and enjoy this allow those who has limited budget to be in a to book in a low demanded period and those who are booking um, in a high demanded period to really re leverage this um, uh, this um, room availability so we have uh, been uh, promoting that we're gonna have uh, some work for you and there is going to be uh, um, on two excel sheets we have uh, we have created two or actually one is very basic one so whoever is from the here from the big hotel chains it may be going to look like very simple you know but for those who has no experience with uh, bar pricing or maybe dynamic pricing you're gonna immediately see what's happening um, when you are applying dynamic pricing and what's happening if you are applying the room type the dynamic room type supplement and the second table is for someone who is having advanced revenue management experience and is already in that uh, Maslow pricing strategy level on a four or eventually, you know, thinking about to moving into the uh, level, um, um, level two and one. So let me just go um, to that Excel sheet. I'm going to activate my cursor so you can see better where actually where I'm moving so this is an example for a hotel with let's say 20 rooms so it's a small property and it it is working like that it's very very simple we have the arrival date for example we have the weekday we have certain occupancy on that day if we are applying rec rate or seasonal pricing it is the pricing is always is reflecting to a weekday eventually or to the season, low season, high season. Then we have um, the possibility or we are just, uh, showcasing here the bar, bar pricing based on the seasonality. So it means we have a bar levels. Let me just just showcase, uh, for example, for this example, I have been you know, playing with this very simple bar level uh, structure. And based on that, we have been setting up the pricing like that. And if you are moving to the second level, we have an open pricing based on demand and maybe with the help with revenue management system. And this is what's happening with our price. So you can see if you look at those three columns that the prices, the pricing are changing. Next to that um, basic uh, set settings of the price, uh, pricing, we have been adding the room type supplement. This is the fixed one. So every single day, your upgraded room has a value plus 10 euro. And we have a dynamic pricing on that room type. And we have on every single day, and every single day we have been using a different supplement. So let me just do a little calculation for you. The calculation is based on recreate pricing. So we are just taking the lowest level of the Maslow pyramid. And we are moving to the level number one. So really the cream de la cream of the pricing strategies in the revenue management. I have been playing with four scenarios. You can do the same for you in your hotel. Um, you will be getting, um, you will be able to get access to this uh, spreadsheet. So you can really play around with that. And I have done three nights check-in on Sunday, five nights check-in on Sunday, two nights check-in on Friday, and two nights check-in uh, check on Tuesday. I have been calculating the average rate per night for that particular stay, for this particular booking. So um, when it comes to the rec rate, it looks like that. When it comes to calculation for bar pricing based on the seasonality, it is looking like that. And when it comes to the open bar, uh, open pricing on a demand, so this is the level number one, it looks like that the average room night, um, average daily rate. And then I have been taking um, recreate pricing with fixed supplement and the ADR, the average daily rate of that 
reservation to reservation one to four, it is changing like that. When it comes to the dynamic uh, supplement and open pricing, it is changing like that. So imagine that in that week, I have sold only, let's say four reservations, giving me to altogether 12 room nights, very simple math. All what is actually, what does it mean in this case is that only with four reservations and 12 room nights, I am, I am missing, let's call it missing the revenue in a value of 115 or 152, roughly 152 euro. So it means almost one room. In our case, even more than one room, because if I if I use the rec rate, I'm just, you know, my average based on the um, each reservation is below 152. Imagine that I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to start to applying dynamic pricing and on the top also the room type supplement. And I'm going to sell 1,000 room nights, eventually 2,000 room nights or 2,500 room nights that I'm coming, uh, just representing you know, the occupancy which I'm going to reach. We are going to do that. And look at the numbers, which I am actually at this moment missing, the revenue which is missing between the level five and level one. Of course, it really depends in which level are you positioned right now. So the difference may be a little bit lower because as I mentioned, the uh, level one is like creme de la creme. And then in this case, from you can really make, you know, utilize your free availability, your free inventory, making sure that you are getting the best out of that and only just changing the way you are thinking about the pricing strategy and eventually using the dynamic pricing. So this Excel sheet is very simple. This Excel sheet was prepared only just to showcase the, the calculation. It is not based on what's your competition doing, what are your fixed pricing for corporate travel, what are your group pricing, only just on, a, on let's say, on a public pricing without, let's say, without, you know, um, thinking about how's going the demand going to look like for you and stuff like that. And then, yeah, maybe I should ask any questions <laughs> because I would like to keep to my 15 minutes and I'm, I'm, I'm all my, almost like, it's too much, I just took too much of uh, your time, Nicolas. But anyway, we have, um, we have also that advanced spreadsheet. Which we have, uh, which is which has been prepared for you, and it is uh, for the hotels using already the dynamic pricing, using the open pricing, and you will be able uh, to let's say um, calculate the scenario one and scenario two using um, using export from OTA inside to make it much easier and more precise. So the basic table was very simple one. This one is more for advanced uh, revenue managers who can who would like to let's say see what is going to happen and play with this around what is going to happen if you gonna you know implement this supplement on this day in upcoming let's say ninety days. And um, now it's your turn, Nicolas. Let me just stop share screening. Thanks a lot, Radka. Definitely very interesting, both templates, the day by day, obviously more accurate for people that are working on day by day, know how to forecast. So I'm sure that our audience would either choose number one, the more basic or number two, uh, that will give them a more precise uh, calculation. So uh, I will now quickly share my screen. I won't take more than 15 minutes, maybe even we'll try a little bit less. So, uh, I will speak uh, about price points, but I will also give you some like examples, like what's right now happening in the world and how you can manage that, how you can automate that and make your life simpler. So similarly to all of you joining here, I'm a hotelier, I'm in revenue management since 2014, and I'm still quite active in uh, revenue management on top of my uh, main duties in uh, OT Insight. When it comes to OT Insight, um, I don't know, I think a lot of people know us already. I saw a lot of customers registered. If not, 
hear a little bit info about us. 55,000 hotels are working with us and all top 10 global chains are also working with us. Uh, but let's go to the main juice and let's actually speak about data, let's speak about revenue and let's speak about automation. So what I will show you today, and we will speak about price points for these who don't know, we'll explain what's price points in a minute. This is really based on a true story. Like everything we will see today is all real data. So how can we increase our ref bar very, very easily, even without spending dozens of money for expensive tools just by having sort of basic knowledge and some basic automation because it's already 2022 and you know uh, a lot of people left during the pandemic they're not coming back to the industry so obviously we need more automation because one person does the job that uh, two person did before covid so how what do we do and now before we jump jump into the practical side just one little note here uh, we will base today's calculation and discussion based on one simple principle from revenue management theory. Different customers are willing to pay different price for using the same amount of resources. As simple as that, right? If you uh, know about your travel plans, you can book a non-refundable flight and you're okay. But if you're not sure about your travel plans, you need to pay more to book a first class or business class that will give you the possibility of changing the days. The principle is very, very simple. Let's know not stick into theory we're not in university but this is very important for what's coming next so we have two options when it comes to dynamic supplements only two options let's explore option number one option number one is take decisions based on data right all decisions need to be based on data there was a really cool study done in 2020 uh, 2015 that said that 84 percent of all hoteliers they think that they incorporate all this is the key thing here. All data into their pricing models, all. We're only speaking about uh, dynamic room type supplements and let's see if this is actually true or not. I did a few days back a LinkedIn poll and it's still open. You can uh, make with your phone the QR code and go and vote. Uh, although it's not a presentative, it's like 40 something people that voted. However, most of people that voted, they said that, you know, they're at this, highest level, not they're not using fixed levels or seasonal, et cetera, et cetera, which is really good. I'm, I'm happy and thankful for everyone that voted, but let's go into a little bit more observation. So yesterday I made one more post on LinkedIn. I spent more than one and a half hour exploring different cities, including Vienna, Berlin, and Budapest and Prague. And this is just an example for Prague because I didn't put this into a study. I took a really nice four-star property with its uh, 10 competitors. Obviously, the names are hidden due to confidentiality. And actually, only one of 11 hotels are applying dynamic room type supplement. Here, we can see that in the rate shopper for inside, we're comparing standard with clean premium. And this is uh, the property, which is number nine. So number one has number nine has dynamic room type supplement. Maybe now it's not the highest system in Prague because people are coming to Greece where I'm located, but we can see that lowest supplement is 27 and sometimes it can reach up to 31. For the rest, it is fixed. So these are really different things that we see in comparison to hotels believing that they incorporate all their data into the pricing model or to the results of the poll that everyone is utilizing um, dynamic room type supplements. So the main question is why do people still not implement that since it's quite easy it's one of the easiest ways that you can increase your revenue and obviously that is the main essence of every hotelier even if you don't have a revenue manager you're a sales director or, or a gm you still want to increase revenue and and some things you can do them on your own right even if you don't have a revenue manager well the main thing is here the main answer is price points so just imagine this hotel has a lot of room types. Okay, it's an extreme example, but still a lot of hotels have three room types or four or five, even if they don't have 10, like in this example. What would happen once a hotel has three or four or five or more room types? Let me show you in the next slide. This thing will happen. Whenever you have multiple combinations, such as room types, 
free cancellation, non-refundable, single rate, double rate, triple rate, room only, bed and breakfast. I was literally scrolling on the booking.com uh, page of this property for more than 30 seconds to uh, go to vent. Obviously, uh, this is an extreme example. I will repeat, not every hotel has 10 or 15 room types, but still the amount of combinations, and this is what we call price points, even for a hotel that has three or four room types, is quite big if you consider three, four room types, free cancellation, non-refundable, room only, bed and breakfast. It's already like more than 20. So how can you really manage all these multiple price points, even if you have only three room types or four? Let's exclude that you're an economy property, just having one economy room type, and that's it. Remember what I said in the beginning, you just have two options. So the option number one is based on data, based on automation. And what is actually the second option? Well, the second option is actually to go and look at the stars and just decide randomly on every single price point you would need to have, like standard room and deluxe and superior and junior suites and suites. What should be my price for free cancellation? What should be my price for non-refundable? Should I offer discounts for additional length of stay? Should I activate a mobile discount on booked on Expedia? Should I activate a direct promotion that if people book me direct, they get, I don't know, a 5% discount and a free upgrade to the next room type? A lot of different price points. And unless this is being automated, it's like basically look at the stars and making a random decisions. Why? The very simple answer is time. There is no more precious resource for any hotelier than time. Having spent uh, my whole life in the hospitality industry, uh, I've studied that, I've done the revenue management. We know, you know, a lot of hoteliers are working 10 or 12 hours per day, and we still need to take care of the availability and the restrictions during the weekend so that the hotel doesn't get sold out or overbooked, et cetera, et cetera. So time is the most precious resource. And obviously you cannot do this without any automation. So key takeaways, it's impossible to monitor and manage multiple price points manually. Although in this session, we are only speaking about the dynamic room type supplements. And after this call, you will get the template to calculate how much more you can earn by doing such. However, there are more price points. Cancellation policy, desktop versus mobile, longer length of stay discounts, channel promotions, uh, meal type supplements, extra bed price, like how much are you pricing for your third and fourth adult in, in, in the room and point of sale. Let's say that you want to attract people from Israel or people from Saudi Arabia and you want to activate a specific promotion for them, like literally multiple price points. And sometimes it's very complicated because it's a discount applied on top of a discount. But anyway, that's a story for another time. And key takeaway part number two, if you do not apply multiple price points, then obviously you are not applying revenue management. It's as simple as that because you are missing at one of the very main principles of revenue management. You are missing to sell the same thing to different people that have a different uh, you know, purchasing power. So you're just leaving money on the table. So two key takeaways. First, for first, you need automation. For second, you need willingness to have automation and make more money. Stop leaving that on the table. Super small homework, and we're finishing within the next few minutes. Let's calculate using Radcast template how much money you're leaving on the table. This will be sent to you automatically following this presentation. For everyone that has the OTN site trial or is already an OTN site user, just go to the uh, OTN site extranet, ensure that your room type mapping is correct. Why? Because you need to ensure that you're comparing, as we say, apples with apples, standard rooms to standard rooms, deluxe to deluxe, junior suite to junior suites, etc., etc. For these ones of you that came to this webinar, will get the template, but you have no clue what's your competitor pricing because you don't have access to OTN site. There is a free trial available for everyone taking part in this webinar because no one is stating that you should copy paste what your competitors do, definitely. But again, you should not decide on your pricing just based on the stars. 
So you need to know the strategy of your competitors or your city because this definitely has an impact on your property. So again, scan the QR code, get the free trial, and our support team will do their best possible to set it up by this evening if you haven't claimed that. So scan the access right here. And last one, what's coming next tomorrow, we will have a super small case study. I intentionally chose a non-branded hotel that just have two small properties, 40 rooms here in Greece. It's not a chain, it's not 200 rooms. They're using a legacy PMS and for every one of you using a server-based PMS, you know how difficult it is to make all these dynamic price changes in the PMS. Unless you're making these changes in the channel manager or in an RMS, it can be quite complex, but it is possible. We will see how this super small chain in Greece did that. And we will also see how much more money it earned. So yes, 40 room property did that and we will present the results tomorrow. Yes, server-based PMS, it is definitely more difficult than a cloud-based, but it is possible. As far as you want to earn more money, join us for tomorrow's session to learn the results of this property in Greece. Last one, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you have any further questions, feel free to uh, text me on LinkedIn as well. That's all for today. Sorry for taking just a few minutes over. I hope it was very much interesting. Kratka, thanks a lot for organizing that together with us. In tomorrow's session, we will be happy to have any of your questions, see what was the impact of your calculations, like how much more you would um, earn and just have an open discussion, see the case study. It won't take longer than 30 minutes and then we will be ready to start an amazing weekend. Give it back to you, Radka. I think you are muted. I cannot hear you. Of <laughs> course, I'm muted. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Thank you. Thank you. It was really, it was interesting. I'm looking forward to see the case study tomorrow. My experience, uh, guys, is that there are definitely also a hotels which we have been actually consulting and helping them to increase the revenue, which has never been working on a demand pricing. They have been starting to implement dynamic pricing and they have no legacy PMS and they have no CRM, uh, uh, CRS, the revenue management system. They have like really limited technology. And even though those hotels have been able to to increase the revenue in the first year by 35%, you know, going up with the ref par higher than they would ever expect. So, I mean, you know, working on a dynamic pricing, if you do it right and, and you do it in, in strategic way, then you can simply definitely starting to make more money. And if you will be upgrading your, uh, you know, hotel pricing strategies to the next level, then there is more and more to discover and you will see immediately, you know, the, the great outcome uh, when it comes to the, you know, revenue coming into your property. So, I mean, from this perspective, um, there is um, there is a huge potential even for the hoteliers which has never been using um, um, dynamic pricing and are kind of thinking yeah we don't use the dynamic pricing yet so how we can handle that so we just need to have the um, the right approach and you see the you know the path from the from the basic one to the to the let's say cream de la cream of the pricing strategy it's some process and we just need to make sure that you're going to do it right so the technology can definitely help you and what i'm going to do i'm going to share the basic revenue uh, excel sheet in the link um, as a link uh, under this video so you can download it please do not make changes to my file just um, arrange a copy it will be on a google drive uh, excel so you can just download it if you use the uh, microsoft um, Excel, so you can uh, simply use it. Who is um, familiar with the Google Drive um, open source, then you can simply just make a copy into your Google Drive and try to um, try to accommodate or try to you know exercise it. Tomorrow, we would like to definitely see you um, you know sharing some kind of outcomes. You don't really have to share the numbers. You can only share like what you have seen. Uh, you know what kind of aha moment you have been having. Um, 
there is um, this kind of free trial from OTA inside. So if you would like to see what is your competition doing and what's the market for you, then you are definitely invited to, you know, check this out. And, um, you know, Nicolas and his team is going to give you, there is a special video is going to guide you um, on that, um, you know, on that way, how you can generate, let's say the report and import it into the file. Um, so everything will be shared. And tomorrow we're gonna see each other at 11.30 with Nicolas case study. And I will be adding additional information how we can work with this pricing strategy with the dynamic pricing on um on the on the room type supplement in a low season and high season just a little small tweaks which can definitely make you uh, more successful you know um one, once applying this uh, pricing strategy so guys i believe we are done we should not take more than let's say at this moment 40 minutes i'll see you tomorrow 11 30 in this group if you feel uh, there is someone else missing in this group, please give them the shout, tell them that we will be streaming tomorrow live. And I'm looking forward to see you all tomorrow. And thank you, Nicolas, for today. And I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. See you. Take care. Bye-bye.